So you're on your reinvention journey and you look around and you have no friends. Oh, honey, you are not alone. I hope you're ready for this episode because you're going to need your post-it, your pen. You're going to need a weighted blanket, your ambition planner. You may even need a box of tissues because we're about to talk about why you don't have friends and some of the steps that you can take in order to make new friends or rebuild old friendships. If you're ready to get started, let's go. Hello, Ambition Babes. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion, also known as the face of ambition across all social media platforms. And today I thought we would do something a little different. I'm going to have a little girl talk. I'm sitting here. I was about to do my makeup to get ready to record. And I was talking to my sister and I was like, I, and I've done this before. Like, I'm just going to turn on the camera. But today I was like, I'm just turning on the camera to have a girl chit chat about friendships because we really desire to have friendships. We desire to have somebody that we can talk to, confide in and all of those things. But when you get a certain age, it just seems like Drake was right. Like no new friends is just what we are doing. And it's just kind of disheartening because we do desire to have a closer relationship with individuals, to feel connected to people, to be able to talk to somebody about problems or situations that we're going through. And it just is, it's unfortunate that we have live just long enough to know that we can't always trust everyone, that everyone that says that they are your friend ain't really your friend. Isn't that what your mother used to say? So today during this episode, I really want to talk about friendships. And I, you know, I was listening to some of my faves on like podcasts and all of those things, which I'm definitely going to link in the description. They were talking about, I just was really doing a deep dive into friendships, how to find them, how to build them, how to nurture them, why they break up. Why is it so hard to make a friend over 40? Like, what's the problem? Like, we're not likable. Like, I mean, I look at myself and I'm like, why don't I have friends? Like, I feel like I'm a likable person. I like to have fun. I stay committed to the things I say I'm going to do. I don't lie. I'm not going to cheat you out your money. I'm not going to talk about you. I'm not going to try to your man. Like, what's the deal? And I was really just doing some just deep research on what the problem is. And I've learned quite a bit about what's going on with our friends, our friendship groups, our bonds, and even the type of friendships that we desire. So while I sit here and do my makeup, I thought we would chit chat about it a little while because, you know, I consider myself your bestie, your big auntie, the big sister you've never had, your digital big sister. That's what I like to be for you all. And it's so easy to be able to do it like this, but somehow whenever it's time to plan a lunch and a girl's trip and even just pick up the phone and call or text somebody, it seems really odd or strange. So I really want to break down some of the things that I've learned. And I really want to answer you all's questions. You all have asked so many times in the chat to do an episode about friends. And it's something that I feel like I've shied away from a little bit because I really feel like I don't have the answer. It is something that I currently am dealing with of like getting to this age of looking around and no one is there. Over the past two years, I've lost a child and my dad. And I look at the handful. And when I say handful, I mean, maybe five people who were really there for me, who prayed with me, who sent me food or flowers. It was such an emotional time. And it's whenever those big things happen in life that you really realize like who your friends are. You know, like when you know someone knows you need them and they're not there, it's the time that you realize like, man, I, I feel lonely or I feel like I'm isolated or I feel like maybe I've even outgrown some of my friendships. And so this was a really difficult one for me to unpack because it's something that I'm currently struggling with. And traditionally, I like to do a lot of research and have some tips and steps. And then I like to try all the steps that I'm going to break down to you before I even bring them to you so that I know that they work. But today, I really just want to talk it out with you all. I just want to have a good girlfriend chit chat for you to leave all your comments and thoughts and suggestions down in the comment section. You all know I love to meet you all there. Or even if you want to send me a voice note on Instagram, I would really love to just talk about this a little bit further as we're figuring out what to do about our friends and what no one ever told me about having friends over 40. So you all have mentioned it time and time again in the chat, but today it really came up when I was talking to my sister about a book that I just read. So I just inhaled, like literally inhaled this book by Kennedy Ryan. Oh, there's two books in her series right now that I was reading. Um, so I, I can't remember the name. I can't believe I can't remember the name, but you know what? It's literally because I didn't put the book down enough to like read the title. As soon as I got in, I was in. And, um, and if you've read any of Kennedy Ryan's books, you all know she's good honey like her writing huh. so when I was talking to my sister about the book she was like so the book was good what was it about and so when I was telling her what it was about, you know, I was giving her all the juicy details. And then I was really thinking about the like overall theme of the book. And it was really that the book was about friendship. And it just made me think about how much I longed for 
a friendship like the girls had in the book. Like every time I see friendship, anything, I'm always longing for that relationship. So like when I watch Insecure, Sex in the City, Girlfriends, Living Single, I'm always like, I want that. Like I want a group of girlfriends that we ride for each other, we trust each other, we help each other whenever we're down, we support each other in anything that we're doing. And it's just crazy how whenever you get to a certain age, you look around and the lack of support from your friends or compassion or the people that you feel like you could really run to and and like feel confident that whatever you talk to them about, they're going to keep it in confidence um, that you can even pray with or that you can go back on your word with and they're not judging you. It's just so many layers to friendships. And sometimes you just look and you're like, I wish I had what other people have. I have a friend of mine from college. Her name is Andy. And I watch her and her friend from college go all around the world together. I mean, they're in Dubai, they're in Turks and Caicos, they're climbing a mountain somewhere. And I just look at their friendship like, why don't I have friends like that? Like they go everywhere together. I, they're married, they have children, they have careers, they're doing all of these things. And so all of the reasons why statistics say that we don't have these type of friendships, they've been able to defy those odds. But when I was really doing some research about this episode, just getting prepared for it even before today, I heard a sociologist say, oh, and it was a sociologist on a podcast. I'm going to link it below. Uh, her podcast is called Friend Forward. And I think I've mentioned her podcast before because this is something that I'm really, really passionate about. So I, I listen to her podcast often, but she was saying the majority of friendships are established and built before the age of 26. Because before the age of 26, we're really able to life ain't life in like we're not adulting yet for real for real we're still figuring out our careers we haven't had four or five kids we don't have a whole bunch of debt we're not trying to figure out life we're not pivoting from that one situation to the next a lot of the things that we are dealing with now before the age of 26 we're just not dealing with and so it made me realize like if i didn't establish some of those really good fundamental relationships before that age maybe i wouldn't have them and when i look at my friend andy and the, how they've been friends since college and maybe even before that they they were able to build the type of relationship that they had when they were younger, before the kids, before the husbands, before the C-sections, before the surgeries, before the mothers getting sick, the parents dying, the relocation, the career shifts, all of the things that keep us separated from our friends or even like our core friends that we had in college, they established that and understood where they were, set healthy boundaries, decided what their friendship was going to look like well before the age of 40. You guys, these eyebrows are so tortured. I have missed every eyebrow appointment and I called them today like I was going to be able to get in. Like, <laughs> trying to disguise my voice. Hi, I wanted to see, you know, if you had an appointment. They're like, yeah, you can come in two weeks. I was like, ugh, I'm so over these eyebrows. Okay, so today I want to break down some of the common reasons why we don't have friends or have healthy relationships over the age of 40 and some of the solutions that I found that I'm really working on to see if I can curate healthy relationships and debunk this idea of not being able to have good, thriving, equitable friendships over the age of 40. So you guys, if you all like makeup content, please let me know in the comment section below because I'm not doing my makeup in any order. For some reason, I can talk and chew gum, but sometimes whenever I talk and do makeup, things get out of order. So if you want to see how I actually put on makeup in the order I actually actually do it in and I would be very happy to do a pro aging makeup tutorial. You guys did know that I used to be a professional makeup artist for many years. So makeup, beauty, skincare, all of those things are something that I'm really passionate about. Okay, if I interrupt a video like this, I have something major to say. Your girl applied to be a member of the Sephora squad. I am so excited about the possibility of being selected to represent a brand that I, we have loved for decades, but I need your help. If I have ever encouraged, inspired, or motivated you with my content, Sephora would love to hear about it. If you feel so inspired to help me strengthen my applications and chances of being selected, could you please leave me a testimonial? I've left all the information in the description below. This is a life-changing opportunity for me and it would not be possible without your help. There is absolutely no pressure, of course, to leave a testimonial, but I would like to thank you guys so much for your love and support. It means absolutely everything to me. Okay, thank you, thank you, hugs and kisses, but let's get back to this video. Okay, so let me get into these tips and I jotted some of them down. So some of the reasons why we don't have friends is that we're just on different levels. 
financially, spiritually, emotionally, our marital status, our dating status. Sometimes you feel like whenever you have kids or you get married, you have to end your friendships. And although we know that that's just not true, sometimes we just isolate ourselves and really pour ourselves all the way into our whatever we're doing right now and really forget about the relationships that we built before the relationship that we're now nurturing. I know that financial status can really change a friendship. You got that one friend that's bawling out of control. She can go to Guangzhou, China whenever she gets ready to and just go shop and then she's going to the Olympics in Paris and then she's going to Canada to watch the leaves change. And that's just not your financial testimony at this time. It can be really hard to maintain a friendship with someone whenever you're on different financial wavelengths or you're married and your friends are not. Or even if you're doing the emotional work to be able to heal yourself, to be able to heal yourself from past traumas and experiences and your friends are not. I believe it's one thing to be the strong friend, but then there's another thing to be the friend that is working on themselves emotionally and have a group of friends that are just not. They're not ready to get the help that they need, to get the support that they need, to get over some of the things that they've been through. And what ends up happening is you find yourself not wanting to be around the friend that has not healed emotionally because all they want to do is cry. They don't feel happy. They're in a state of depression. And it is not her fault that she is really sad right now, but it does make it more difficult when you are in a more healthy emotional space whenever your friends are not. Other reasons why we don't have friends are time constraints or life conditions. I mean, I have such good friends that live on the other side of the globe. So when Whenever I'm up and ready to talk to them at night, they're still at work. I'm sure you've had friends that were just your seasonal friends that were in your life because of a situation that you were going through. Either you all are part of the same church or support group, or maybe you all were both going through a divorce. Maybe your kids were on the same soccer team, but you thought you were real friends. But as soon as the situation changes, you're no longer communicating. Fear and vulnerability also play a huge part in why we don't make new friends. Let somebody that you thought you could trust talk about you behind your back, steal your money, steal your man use you talk poorly about you to other individuals it can be big like them sleeping with someone like your partner or something seemingly small like them talking about everybody else whenever they're with you so you know they got to be talking about you when they're with somebody else our desire to be safe sometimes supersedes our desire to have friendships if you've ever had a friend that you've experienced some kind of trauma with or had a bad breakup in a friendship you're just a little more reluctant to jump right back into another friendship especially whenever you're calling somebody like your bestie your ex boom boom your ride or die, the person that's going to be with you till the wheels fall off. Whenever you've experienced betrayal in a friendship, it just makes you that much guarded whenever it's time to enter a new friendship. So that's why I suggest whenever you are thinking, you know what? I want friends. I want to be able to have really good relationships. I've experienced some really bad things in the past with my friendships, but I'm really ready to try. And I feel like this is going to be different. I want you to do these two very simple steps before you allow another friend into your life. I want you to take a post-it or inside of your ambition planner, and I want you to write out your friendship goals. What is it that you want in a friendship? What is it that you desire? What is it that you feel like you're missing in the friendship groups that you have? Do you have any friends currently and are just really wanting new friends? Or are you really saying, I want to start over because I'm so different. I want to be able to start over with a new set of friends. Do you want a big group of friends? Do you want friends that you travel with? Do you want friends that you just kiki with and keep it light and surface? Do you want a friend that you call every day and you all go shopping and go grab a coffee and go travel together? The very first step is to understand what type of friend you are looking for. And the second step to understand why you desire friendship. What is it that is making you say, you know what? I really want friends right now. I want to be connected to somebody. I want to be able to talk to somebody. I feel really lonely. I'm going through a big divorce or breakup and I just need someone to talk to. Or is it that you've never had a best friend or that you have emotionally healed from their past baggage? You're really ready to be able to have a friendship like that girl Andy I just mentioned. The second thing that I want you to consider is why do you want friends? Why is it that you desire friendship? Writing this out and using this as a journal prompt honestly is so transformative because it helps you to be able to understand if you're running a friend because you feel lonely, if you just want to be vulnerable with somebody, you feel really needy right now. If you just desire companionship and want to be able to watch love is blind UK with. I do you want a friend? And this is really important for you to be able to unpack because it's going to help you to also be a better friend whenever you get into this friendship. You know exactly what you want and then you know exactly who you want to be and how you want to show up whenever you identify the perfect friend for you. So you guys, whenever I did these two tasks, it was very, very interesting what I found. What I was able to identify is that there are two things that we really desire whenever we're looking at friendships. One is that are you looking for a friend like a one-on-one -on -one intimate friendship? 
or are you looking for community? And whenever I started to really deep dive into this concept, I realized that there was a huge difference. Whenever your desire is to have community, you're really wanting to have like broad communication with individuals that you share interest with. It provides you with a sense of belonging, support. You feel a part of a collective. You typically have a shared identity. Like you may be a part of the same religious group or professional organizations, or you all enjoy networking. If you really desire community, you're looking for a group of individuals who are purpose-driven. They have clear intentions and activities they like to do. Maybe it's volunteering or certain hobbies, or they're really into professional development. However, if you have identified that you're really looking for more of a friendship, you want a deeper connection, a personal relationship, something that is more intimate, grounded. Maybe it's just one-on-one -on -one or maybe just two people. You want a closer bond. You want to share certain experiences. You desire the emotional intimacy that comes from having a friend that you can call and tell absolutely anything and know that that person is going to be honest with you. They're going to protect you. They're going to provide insight. They're going to love you regardless of the things and the mistakes that you make. They provide individual support and they're always going to be there for you. You Maybe you desire someone that knows you really, really well. Someone that knows like, girl, it's raining and I already know she's going to be sad. Let me give her a call. Or that I already know that she's about to be planning a big trip. Let me go ahead and save my coins for her birthday. Perhaps you desire a friendship that is going to help you with your well-being and your personal growth. You're growing together. You may be going to therapy, maybe together or even separately. You believe and support each other's dreams and overall goals. Answering those simple two questions really helps you to identify exactly what you're looking for. Do you want a friend or do you want a community? Whenever I answer these questions, I really started leaning towards the fact that I want more community. Maybe not 15 or 20 people. People, but maybe a group of four girls that we always are there for each other. We have the common interests. We can kiki and laugh. We can get deep if we need to, but we can also just support each other. We have shared interests and hobbies and we like to share in different experiences. But right now, because of all the friendship trauma that I've experienced, I'm really not ready for that deeper, intimate one-on-one -on -one relationship with many other people. That type of relationship I've built with my husband, and I think that it's going to be something I'm going to have to talk to my therapist about on being able to expand past him. I know that we've all experienced hurt whenever it comes to friendships. And some of us are able to get over it faster than others. And it's something that I'm going to be really intentional on working on and developing my identity whenever it comes to being a friend and the types of friends I would like to have. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm a really, really good friend. And I try to expand my friendship group. Like the other day, I was going to this event. So I invited this girl to come with me. It was going to be a very cutesy, very demure event. So I thought I would bring someone along. The girl shows up. We have a great time. We get a little deep. I think it's fantastic. I think I have a new friend. So a few days later, I DM her on Instagram just to check in with her and see how she's doing. And you guys, she ghosted me. I've seen her on social media. I know she's alive, but she's just not talking to me. Perhaps it's me. Perhaps it's her. But when things like this happens, it makes you just put your guard up just a little bit higher. Like I tried to be her friend. I tried to go outside of my comfort zone and look what it gets me. Nor am I going to act like I'm not going to put myself out there and continue to work on building relationships. Building new friendships is really difficult. But one thing that I learned from that Friend Forward podcast that I was telling you about is that she really suggests that we have diversity in our friendship groups. So whenever you are looking for your new friendship group, consider how diverse they are. Maybe you have your friends that are just your moms and you all go to Target together and you get your lattes and you take your kids with you. Maybe you have your work friends. Maybe you have the friends that you all go get happy hour together. Maybe you have your friends you just go and get mini petties with. She went on to say that studies have shown that individuals that have diverse friendships are happier. And it just made me say like, I want that. I want diverse friends. But once I did the exercise, I was like, hmm, do you really? This is why that exercise is so important. Once you figure out your friendship goals, you'll be able to be a much better friend and to be true to yourself. You can look online all day and see what other individuals have and think you wanted. And as soon as you get it, you're like, girl, I'm not trying to talk to you all day. So I hope this episode was helpful in helping you to be able to identify the types of friends that you would like to have and why it is that you desire new friendships. I'm telling you all, those simple two steps are able to answer so many questions for me. Using them as a journal prompt, I was even able to see some of the areas where I haven't been the best friend either. Because you know, we always think it's them and not us, right? They're not a good friend to me. They don't call me back. They're always ghosting me. But baby, what have you done? What about your friends? Are they gonna be around? Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope that it was helpful. And I also pray that you're doing something every single day to reach your most ambitious goals.